So the International Olympic Committee is already looking to the 2032 Summer Olympics. Brisbane will now be the third Australian city to host the event. But while the games are gearing up for the future, all eyes are on Tokyo. COVID-19 continues to cause issues in Japan with competition already underway. And Jamie Yukis is there and shows us the safety protocols in place. All right, I'm at the pre-approved testing site for COVID. After two required COVID tests in Los Angeles, I was off on my 5,500 mile trip to Tokyo. You have to stay at your hotel for 14 days. The only places you're allowed to go are workspaces, pre-approved venues, or the convenience store around the corner. The protocols are just as strict for Olympic athletes. Although athletes are not required to be vaccinated, the safety protocols are strict and involve rigorous testing for anyone connected to the games. Spectators have been barred from most events. Any athlete who has come in close contact with someone testing positive must test daily and quarantine in a single dorm room, including for meals. With the opening ceremony only two days away, uncertainty surrounding this year's games continues. The CEO of Tokyo 2020 said officials will continue to monitor the situation as it unfolds. USA Today sports columnist Nancy Armour. When you hear that there could be a last minute cancellation, no, that's not going to happen. That train left the station a long, long time ago. These games are happening. And yet the number of positive cases continues to rise. More than 70 people from athletes to staff have been infected with the virus. NBA star Bradley Beal was forced to miss the Olympics after being placed in health and safety protocols. Fellow USA basketball star Katie Lou Samuelson tested positive before leaving the U.S. Tennis star Coco Goff and gymnast Kara Aker also returned positive tests. Aker traveled and trained with USA Gymnastics in Japan. Now, you know, every morning I'm checking social media to see if the, the women have posted photos of them at training. I'm checking with USA Gymnastics and the USOPC to see, did everybody test negative again today? There is no ma magic shield around you just because you are vaccinated. Despite health and safety concerns, the head of the World Health Organization today called the games a celebration of hope. Anne-Marie. All right, Jamie, so you mentioned that there's almost no place you can really go. And so I don't even know how much of the city of, of Tokyo <laughs> you've managed to see. But keeping that in mind, what is the city of Tokyo like? I mean, if you could go anywhere, is there any place to go? It remains under a state of emergency. Local fans, they probably won't be able to gather anywhere else to watch the game, I, I presume. But what's it like? Well, you can see it's absolutely beautiful, right? The skyline is stunning here, but we have not been able to do much sightseeing except from the van window as we go, as we said, from the hotel rooms to those pre-approved workspaces or the venues that have been pre-approved uh, by the Olympic Committee itself. There's one convenience store around the corner we've been able to walk to, uh, but there's a time limit. So once you leave, you have to get back within 15 minutes. And we have all these tracking apps on our phone. So there's no uh, funny business that can take place, as you would say, uh, around here. So what we have seen so far is that the streets are really quiet. I, I don't know if you can tell, but there's been tons of traffic on the bridges and things and you can't hear uh, anything. You don't hear people talking. There's no singing, chanting, that kind of thing uh, happening around, which is unusual because usually by this time uh, I covered the Olympics in Rio, you'd have tens of thousands of people starting to descend on a city and you'd be able to hear people out and about and starting to partake in those celebrations. Uh, that will not be happening. As we know, uh, we have to sit in this kind of modified quarantine for about 14 days uh, and then on the 15th day we can go out and we can go into grab a coffee or go to a restaurant grab food uh, but people are not going to be gathering they're not going to be watching the Olympic Games there won't be big parties they are very concerned that this could be a super spreader event so I was doing a, uh, some reading of some of the local newspapers this morning and the only thing I did read is that some of the younger people are starting to get a little restless and meeting outside uh, to have cocktails because there's no alcohol sales at any of the restaurants or bars here either so uh, they're getting liquor from from other places, uh, convenience stores and that type of thing, and then meeting up to kind of hang out. It's much like the very, very locked down part uh, that we saw in the United States during, during COVID in March and April of 2020. So uh, no spectators. Um, and as I understand it, that includes probably family members of athletes too, but the first lady is gonna be arriving. Um, what's her role gonna be? Yeah, there's been a lot of discussion about those athletes and their families not able to come to the Olympic Games.
spoken to a number of athletes uh, before I left Southern California to come here, and their families are really disappointed. You know, they'd love to be able to come and cheer on uh, their family members, and, and it's such a big deal for these Olympians to make it into the games. However, the last few days, the conversations changed to then concern about their family members' uh, health. As, as we talked about in the piece, there was an alternate gymnast who tested positive, and I think a lot of people, once they heard gymnast, went, oh my goodness, uh, that's such a premier event. Not that COVID, you know, we should take it seriously, whatever the event is. But I think a number of people that kind of stuck in their mind uh, and athletes, families hearing that that particular gymnast had been vaccinated before coming. People now concerned that their friends and family stay safe as they're participating in the games. As you said, uh, despite the health and safety concerns, uh, Jill Biden is is traveling to Japan. She's actually in route right now. Once she lands, she'll not only participate in some Olympic events, but she has two diplomatic events on her schedule uh, as well. It seems to be a pretty packed schedule while she is here in Tokyo. So uh, we'll be watching that as she arrives. But, um, you know, there's not going to be that big fanfare that you're used to at the opening ceremonies, the closing ceremonies, those types of things. So I think there will be a lot more focus on some of these individual events or diplomatic events that she's going to that we'll be watching for. But despite the concern, she is on her way. All right. Yeah, you know, not the same fanfare, but safety first. I want, you know, everyone to be healthy and come out of the games uh, doing fine, carrying back nothing but medals, and, and that's it. Um, Jamie, thank you so much. <laughs>